I was saying uh, to see Brother Clary there today, welcome in Jesus' name. Brother Clary, most of us perhaps did not know, but suffered a little injury. But by God's grace, everything was work well. Amen. So that he can be here today. Amen. I must let you know that Brother Ben Lewis is down at his home in Providential, that's just Arab Cottage. So he's at his home so that we can call him or we can pay a visit. I don't know if he's not going to be, but I get it and pass it on to us in a little while. Let us pray one for another. Knowing that the time is at hand. We need each other, brother. Oh. Yeah, we need each other. I must confess, I must myself confess that I was triggered with a particular pain a couple of Sabbaths ago, Sabbath night for that matter. And I had to be rushed to the hospital. Okay. And they gave me two injections and they tried to fix me up there. Because of a CPN pain, I could not have drive, so I was retrieved. Okay. And um, you know, I asked the Lord to take charge, despite whatever pain, whatever problem we have, we have having, but I'm asking to take charge. Amen. And He did take charge. Amen. Amen. Because I can stand here today. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. And uh, when I pick up my compass and I and, and went to the garden and so forth, my wife was wondering what happened. <laughs> I said, Well, the Lord fix it, so don't worry. <laughs> have no fear. That's right. I want to let us know quickly that stress cause a lot of trouble in the mind. Mm. And when the mind is sick, the whole body is sick. So don't allow these little bits and pieces to drive us away. If mm. the Lord will that we go, we go. Don't worry about that. Somebody else will be there. In Jesus' name. <laughs> all right. Yeah, don't worry. God is good. <laughs> all right. God is good. All the time, all the time. So even the Lord will let it be done. Yeah, man. Don't worry, brother. I'm saying this to say we must secure our soul salvation. Amen, amen. Secure our soul salvation. Mm -hmm. So whatever comes, don't worry. Forget it. In Jesus' name. And so this morning, my brethren, a message comes to us from God's Word. A message that I've been prepared. I have sat down and um, the Spirit of God came upon me and uh, tell me that is what I am. So I always ask God for His Word. That's what I always do. And so the Word God on me and the Spirit of God tell me what to say. And the topic for the message for today is the Word. T-H-E, W-R-E, the Word, definite. Definite adjective, according to the English language, it is a definite adjective, the word. So this is what was presented to us this morning. No wonder that the song that we have sung here today tells us, give me the Bible, holy message shining, that light shall guide me in the narrow way. Precepts and promise, law and love combining, till light shall banish the eternal day. The word, next one, it says what? Give me the Bible, star of gladness in, to cheer the wanderer alone and tempest toss. Is the word shining us this morning? Hmm. Is the word applied to our hearts so and it cheers us along the way? Let's look at the next one. No storm can hide that peaceful rain and healing since Jesus came to seek and save the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord for the word. Give me the Bible when my heart is broken. Hmm. Oh, what a wonder to know when time that come with existing in our world today, we have the word of God. Amen, amen. Praise God for his word. When sin and grief have filled my, my soul with fear, yeah. yes, man. What is that? Give me the Bible, my brethren. Give me the Bible. Give me the precepts. Sorry, give me the precious words of Jesus spoken. Thank God Jesus spoke and I didn't speak. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord for his word. Hold up my hands to show my sin on the air. Are we holding that lamp this morning? In other words, are we lighting up the world with our lifestyle today? Showing the light that we have a 
accomplished by God's ways. You are the light, I am the light, but the light must be shining. Hmm. And so the Savior, the Son says, hold your face lambs to show my Savior here. Oh yes, my brother, the next one says, give me a Bible, all my steps and lighter. Teach me the danger of this realm below. Praise God for his word. That lamp of safety, praise God. The light of God's word is safety for you and for me. We can hide ourselves in this pavilion, yes? Oh, the gloom shall brighten. That light alone, the power of peace can show. What a wonder. Next one, it says here, Give me the Bible. Give me the Bible. Give me the Bible, my brethren. The Bible holy message shine and the light shall guide me in the narrow way. Let us pray. O Heavenly Father, as I proclaim your word today, let each one of us hear your word and that our heart will be touched. Speak to me to speak to your people and lead me by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. The Holy Spirit, yes. The Word, the Word, the Word. A lot of times we have the Word, but we don't use it. Plenty of times we have the Word of God with us, but we don't use it. This morning I want to read a little piece for you. It says here, The Bible contains the mind of God, okay. the state of man, and the way of salvation. The Bible. Amen. Contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Praise God. Mm -hmm. The Bible, the word of God, its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding. That's right. Praise God for this. Its histories are true. Its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise. Mm -hmm. Believe it to be saved. Yeah. And practice it to be holy. Amen. Amen. Are we hearing this this morning? Amen. I read over that little piece. Read it to be wise. Believe it to be saved. And practice it to be holy. Mm -hmm. That goes for all of us here this morning. Yes. Are we practicing what we know? Are we practicing the word of God this morning that we take root in us? That we be rooted and grounded in the word of God? I pray God this morning that this will be the desire of every one of us that we practice the word. It contains light to direct our walk, food to support you and me, and comfort to cheer us. It is the traveler's mark, the pilgrim star, the pilot's compass. Yes, the soldier's soul. The Christian charter. Here, paradise is restored. The word paradise is restored. Heaven open and the gates of hell is closed. Hmm. Yes, Christ is his grand object. Christ is his grand object. Yes, never forget this. Our good is designed and the glory of God is ended. It should fill the memory. Rule the heart and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, and prayerfully. Don't hurry. Don't be in a haste. When we read the word, let it take root in me. Let it take root in us. In other words, I'm telling us, my friend, the word is mighty. The word is powerful. Mm -hmm. And thank God for his word. Amen. Yes, read it slowly. Yes, frequently and prayerfully. It is the mind of wealth, a paradise of glory, a river of pleasure. It is given to you in this life. Will be open in the judgment. Watch it. It is given to me and to you in this life. It will be open in the judgment. Yes, the word. It will be open in the judgment. Will be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility. 
will reward the greatest labor and will uh, condemn all who trifle with its sacred pages. The Holy Bible. Hmm. Don't play with the word. Mm -hmm. The word of God is given to us so that we get our salvation in Jesus Christ. Amen. That coupled together with faith and prayer to live in my day so that we can get the road to eternal life. But here is a wonderful thing that I want to apply to us this morning. It is in three parts. The Holy Scriptures, the Word, it is in three parts. I want us to look at it here. First of all, what it is. Simple message. What it is. Secondly, what it can do. And the third one, a recommendation. Everything is in the Bible. What it is, let's look at it. I want you, Mr. Operator, to assist me there, and we will see what wonderful thing the word is to us. Let's go to a well-known passage of scripture recorded in the Bible in Psalm 119, the first 119 division of the Psalm, verse 105. It is well known. But is it well practiced? <laughs> a well-known passage of scripture, but is it well practiced? <laughs> Let us examine it today. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto, unto my, my feet, feet and a light unto, unto my heart. Yeah. The question I'm asking us this morning, I don't want you to answer me. This is for introspect in your own life to see whether we are settling the word of God and that we make the word of God our life, our life so that we can see this dark world and see where and how to go. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my heart. Okay. And I cannot relax on this one, but I must say quickly in verse 130, what does it say? Verse 130 tells us here. The ancient. And it does not only appeal to some people in some place and in some times, but here yeah, about the word of God online. Verse 130 quickly says, what? The entrance of thy word is a light to give an understanding unto the simple. Praise God. Mm -hmm. The entrance of thy word is given light. It gives an understanding unto the simple. Could we understand this? My very, I want to let us know. That when we begin to parole and to search the scriptures, we have eternal life. Mm. But there they will testify of me, Jesus says. So the word of God does great things for us. It is a light that shines in dark places. It is a lamp to my feet. The entrance of that word, the Bible says, give it light. You know what it is in an entrance? You know, sometimes you're going through certain things that you tell you entrance, you decide to pass through it. Well, just so it is, you know, the entrance of that word, just beginning to parole, just beginning to look into it, hmm. just beginning to take the word of God, the Bible says, it is a light to you. So, someone who doesn't know about the scriptures and begin with a good desire, de deciding to take the word of God and read the word of God, the Bible says it is entrance of light that is before your very eyes. The entrance of thy word given light. Like. Let's go down to verse 130 and see what it says. Verse 130. Let's see what the word of God says. I want us to be good students of the word, not to have head knowledge, but to be practical in our everyday living according to the word of God. That's what I want us to do this morning, my brethren. Yes, the entrance of thy word given light, like, given understanding unto the simple, but what does the psalmist say in verse 140? <laughs> verse 140. The Bible tells us here, I want us to get to understand this and don't take the Bible humorously. Don't take the Bible for any ordinary book. Don't take the Bible as some story book that I've been reading. No. Watch the word, what it says. Thy word it's is very pure. pure. Uh -huh. Praise God. The unadulterated word of God. The word of God is very pure. Amen. When people try to take the Bible and turn it into hmm. other different things, and now the Pope now wants to take his, make his own Bible. Mercy. Here we. 
They have been promoting and trying to organize their own Bible. Auto Father. Huh? Auto Father. Yeah. <laughs> so here we see, my friends, the word of God is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Therefore, thy servant loveth me. Do we understand this? The word of God is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. Do we love the word? Mm -hmm. As readers of the Bible, as doers of the word, do we love it? Do we practice it? Is it in us? The Bible is saying to us, my friend, that the word of God is very pure. So we must expose on that. It is not just the word. But it is very pure. Amen, amen. That is so much love in it. Hmm. I want us to go a little further now. Let us go to chapter 12 now, or the 12th division of the psalm, and verse 6. Let us go to the 12th division of the psalm, and verse 6, and see what the word of God is. We say what it is, so I want us to know that that is what it is. The words of the Lord are pure words. Look at it again. Very pure. But this time he says, pure words. And what happens? As silver, silver in the furnace of earth, earth. seven times. Seven times. Well, pure. He cannot do nothing to it. He will not be able to do anything because the word of God is very pure. Mm -hmm. The word of God stands fast forever and ever. For well, I want to hasten to tell you before you forget that the word of God, I want to tell you that the word is God. All right, yeah. In Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13, the Bible tells us that. I want us to quickly get it and look at it. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 13. And he was clothed with the best Egyptian blood, and his name is called the Word of God. All right. Okay. Praise God yeah. for his word. We are dealing here with the creator of heaven and earth. And I want us to know this. Yes. And he was clothed with the best Egyptian blood, and his name is called the Word of God. That is Jesus Christ, my friend. The world was made flesh and dwell among us. The only thing God can put of grace and of truth. Yes, the word of God, I want us to understand it. Don't play with the word. The word has power. And so I go to that point now. What it can do? What it can do? So the next part is what it can do. Let us parody it. Psalm 119 and verse 9. Let's go back to 119 and verse 9. We have it right there in the scripture. Everything is outlined beautifully for us. But I pray God that we have the understanding and the discernment to understand and to discern and to know the time in which we live so that we can take the word of God at heart and live by the word. The Bible says, what he can do? Well, let's see what it says. Where we told shall a young man cleanse his way? Mm -hmm. Where we told shall a young man cleanse his way? The answer is right there. Yeah. By taking heed there for according to thy word. Amen, amen. So in order for you to know that you have sinned, you go to the word. Uh -huh. Even though by nature we will understand our situation as it relates to man and his intelligence, yet still the word of God points out sin. Amen. So if you need to cleanse your way, if you and I need to cleanse our way, we need to go where? To the world. Yeah. Where is all shall I young man cleanse his way? By taking, taking heed thereto according to thy word. Yeah. So the word must be applied. The word must be lived out. The word must be practiced. So that when the word of God comes to us, my friend, it is no joke. For here is our destiny. Salvation with your thought. And so our destiny is designed to right at the very point. So don't choke with the word. Mm. Don't play with the word. For the Bible says that is where a young man will cleanse his way. 
So what the water can do? It can cleanse. All right. What the water can do? Cleanse. It can cleanse. It cleanses us. So my brethren, I'm telling us, in order for we to live in accordance with God's divine will, in order for we to be obedient, in order for we to be faithful, in order for we to suffer long and to continue to live the life that God expects us, we must read the world. Let the word remain in us. But the Bible tells us some important things here. I want us never to forget. Let's run down to verse 11 quickly. Verse 11, what is it? Thy word have I hid in my heart. Lord, yes. Amen. 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 Perfect. This is wonderful. So what do you want to do? The word protects. Yes. Yeah. All right. The word protects you and me. Psalm 34, 7 says what? The angel of the Lord is coming from the book and the faith and what? Deliver it then. He formed the word from the head. He protects. The word of God protects you and me. From what? From sinning. Praise God. I want us to understand this morning from the authority of God's word that the word of God protects you and me. For the Bible says, what? Thy word have I hid in my heart. Has the word find its rightful place in our heart this morning so that we do not commit sin? Mm. Has the word of God find its rightful place in my heart so that I do not commit sin? The word, my brethren, it is sweet in Jesus' name. It is sweet. Thanks be to God for His word. We have seen where we told so that you don't cleanse His way by taking His dead word according to thy word. We have seen also here the word protect us from sin. So I'm telling us, my brethren, that when the word of God is effectively dwelling in my heart and your heart, it protects us from sin. Do we believe it? Yes. Don't let the enemy trick you in any way to tell you that you're not good enough. Don't let the enemy trick you in any way to tell you that you have enough time. Hmm. When we say we go before God and the word of God cleanses us. The Bible says, my brethren, as we have seen from the scripture here, that the word of God protects us from sin. Believe it, and that's it. Nothing more short of that. The word is a protection. So you need to get victory over sin, study the word. You need to get victory over all sorts of problems that affect us, go to the word of God. Whether sickness, whether financial constraint, whether COVID-19, whether whatever problem that affects us in our world today, go to the word of God. Amen. Thy word will protect us, thy word will cleanse us. And let us see what the Bible tells us here. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. What? Yes, we're coming down there. Okay. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Well, this is a well-known passage of scripture. But I want to take a little time now to expound on it. The Bible tells us, for the word of God is what? Quick. It is quick. It is powerful. And sharper than the sharper than the word is Yes, man. He has given to the divided assembly of soul and spirit yeah. and of the joint of sorrow. And he said, he's the son of the thoughts. Of what? The thoughts. The thoughts. And intent. Of the heart. heart. Right. You know the Bible says one part that the heart is desperately wicked. Who can do it? Hmm. The heart of man is desperately wicked. Wickedness alone comes out there. Hmm. But when God takes over and the Spirit of God moves upon the heart yeah. and you read the Word of God, it transforms. Amen. It transforms us. So what we are seeing here, there is a number of points that I want us to note in that passage of scripture that is very important for us. In Hebrew 12, the Bible says, the word of God quickens. It quickens 
It points out since you are in your head, you need to make your move for me. No, for no. Here was a situation. I heard a preacher preaching one time, and I got to use that little situation here. To tell you how the word of God is free and for good. That preacher was saying, here comes that woman who was a prostitute. And while passing by the road and she heard the preacher preaching, she stood up and listened to the words of the preacher. As the preacher preached that word, the word of God entered into her heart, into her mind. She stood up there and she was dressed in her, you know the type of clothes that this prostitute wear? In other words, to advertise the body there. So she was in that apparel. But she stood there and the preacher preached. The next night she came back and the preacher preached. The other night she came back and she listened to the word. The word take an effect on her. It so happened that while she was listening, she decided to make a move. When she heard the altar call from the preacher, she decided to step forward. But dressed in her garments as it were, everyone from the congregation looking at her in amazement, hmm. where is she going? Hmm. But the word of God is great, don't mm -hmm. forget. Yeah. As she walked up the aisles and everybody eyes fixed on her, they were wondering, where is she going? But the preacher kept on preaching. Amen. She stood there, and everybody in amazement now. The woman said, hey, I come to give my life to Jesus. Amen. Is that wonderful? Oh, yes. He can turn the prostitute to be his servant. He can turn any one of us, my brethren. And so the woman stood there, and she decided to give her life to Jesus. She got baptized. Amen. But you know, that does not finish the story. You know what happened? Now, she used to be floating around with the men sitting on the block. So when the next time she was passing by, she was dressed in a different garment. Right. The garments of Jesus Christ, the garments of righteousness, had thrown her out. She's in a new garment. The righteousness of Jesus Christ clothed her. And you know what happened? The men called to her to, to call to her attention. Trying to get what they are custom getting. But she tried to tell them, no, 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 it's not so anymore. I have found a new man. All right. I have found a new man, and that man is Christ Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see how quick and powerful the word is? Yes, ma'am. Just by listening to it, caught your attention, and by God's grace, a change was being made. me. Since we did, my friend, the word of God is quickened. So the word of God quickens. Yes, it brings you life again. Get rid of that old life and put on a new life in Christ Jesus. The word of God is powerful. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 and 23 and verse 29, the Bible says, Is not my word like as a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Hmm. So the word of God breaks. Yes, it breaks the heart, it melts the heart of stone. Because when fire, when heat gets anything, it melts and so. So the word of God is quick, it is powerful. Yes, it breaks rock in pieces, not it can with sun on fire. Fire consumes everything. But thank you to God, the word is like a mama, it breaks our heart out of soul. Mm. Sometimes we are hard, our hearts are hard, we are stubborn, but by the grace of God, that word can break our heart and help us to come to ourselves. Mm. Yes, the word of God, it cuts. The Bible says here, the dividing, piercing even to the dividing of son of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and the zero and the thoughts and the angels of the heart. So the word of God cuts you, my friend. So if nothing can stand against it, it's a discerner of the thoughts and the angels of the heart. And thus the secret of his heart made manifest the deep thing, hidden thing, the heart of man is deceitful, desperately wicked, who can know it? But mm. thanks be to God that the word, being read, being heard, being paroled, can bring about a change in the life of each one of us. Amen. Praise God. And so I want us 
to run through that passage of scripture here in in First Peter chapter one and verse twenty-three. First Peter chapter one and verse twenty-three. I want to talk again. Be born again, not a part of the sea, but a new part by the word of God, which liveth and abideth. Praise God. The word was reading us richly. James tells us in the book of James, chapter 1 there, and verse 23, I think, verse 22, be good of the word, and not give us only of us, but to deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. So the word of God, my brethren, is so wonderful. The Bible, Jesus Christ, when he was tempted by the devil, in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, and verse 4, what does he say? Man shall not live by word alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Praise God for his word. So I want us, my brother, to take the word of God seriously. Mm -hmm. In this COVID time, when Satan tried to separate families, separate nations, separate communities, take the word of God. Let the word of God read in us. Let the word of God remain in you and me. Let the word of God do its work, my brethren. The word can change life. It can change you. It can change me. Let us live by the word of God. And so, the recommendation. The recommendation here for this morning. We're going to turn to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Hear what the Bible recommends. The word of God. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Now, we've got to take this one slowly. I don't want to go fast. Because I want you to sink deep inside of us. What it says? Let the, Let word, the word of Christ, Christ dwell in you richly. We have to emphasize on this word. Because it, the word is very important to me and to all of us this morning. The word of God must be dwelling in our household. Richly. richly. In other words, with substance. You know when you have a plant, you need to give it some nutrients if it don't look well. But you have to identify exactly what is causing the problem and so forth and deal with it. But you know, in putting it in context, the plant needs nutrients. It needs to survive so that it can produce. So the word of God, my friend, was dwelling up richly in all this stuff. What do we want? Teach it and admonish it one another in psalms and hymns and mm. spiritual songs. Sing it with rest to your heart, brother. Praise the Lord. Hold on here, look at I want us to understand something. You see this passage of scripture? I could remember when I was a young boy, I was real. My stepfather, now would be silly. Call people, call brethren, call pastors. And then, come, bless you. Come home, bless you. Let's discuss the word. And I could remember Brother Rally Lally, Brother Ailey, uh, uh, and uh, Brother Mio, and uh, Brother Moore, Jonas, and all of them coming together to discuss the word. And I always see little boys sit down here and listening. And listening. And the word of God. Thanks be to God, by the grace of the God of heaven, it takes effect on me, and I learn the word in Jesus' name. Amen. So they were called together, he thought, because what happened, he had a food, he had a problem with his food, circulation was not going as it should, to the body and so forth, so he could not put on shoes, to go and so forth, as he would like to, and whatever he is. So his health was a little injured. So he used to call the pastors, call the dead president, Pastor Bird, Come and come, I want to understand the passage of scripture. And I could never forget Brother David every time he passed and going up to school with his bike. Um, that time he didn't have his bike yet. But Brother David William, he would call him, come boy, come let's discuss the passage. And so Brother David? Okay. Yes, that is true. And I would sit there and I would listen. So what the Bible say here? Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. How are we having this today? Hmm. Are we having this kind of setting today? Hmm. 
Well, now it's online. It's on Facebook, it's on YouTube, it's on this, so you could see the face and smile and laugh and say, well, I love you. But we need to meet together in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, brethren. So that is where I learned a lot of the passage of Scripture. That is where I learned a lot of things by God's grace, by listening to these men as they sit down and they discuss the word, as they sing songs of praise to the Lord. I learned in Jesus' name. I want us to know that. So my brethren, they are not me, but tell God in what is with me seal. That I can take it and I can learn it and peruse it and find joy in the word of God. Praise the Lord. And I want us to do the same. So let that be the first recommendation. I want the word of Christ to dwell in us. That's the point I want to make here this morning. The word must be dwelling in me. Dwelling means to reside. It must find a home in my heart. The word must find a home in my heart. Not just a place, but a home. Because a home is where you have nice people, children, wife, husband, and everybody who is well. And you well there. So I want us to understand that the word, the recommendation to us this morning, that the word will dwell in our heart. Let's go to Philippians 2.16, the next recommendation. Philippians 2.16. And close it up. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 16. What does it say? Hold it for the word of life. Do I want us to know there is a connection there? In the previous passage, we said, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Now we're talking about the word of life because Jesus himself is life. I want us to understand that. For uh, the, the way to, to, to know truth, he says, um, Christ in each one of us is the hope of glory. And when holding for the word of life, that it may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, that I have lived in vain, according to the word of God. So I want us to know, by the way, that the word that I have recommended to us today, that Paul put the word of life in our heart. Let the word of Christ join us, so that when, as it ends, as it ends when we receive our reward, thank be to God, our reward is a reward. But we will not be lost so that we say at the end we receive it in vain. So I pray God that the word will in us reach you there. Holding for the word of life that it may rejoice in the day of Christ. Thank me to God that he is coming again. Thank me to God that Jesus will come to claim his name for us. Thank me to God that he is coming with power and great glory. Praise the Lord. He is coming and he will give us we will rejoice in the day of his coming. Yes. And the last recommendation says James chapter 1 and verse 22. James chapter 1 and verse 22. The Bible tells us, simple and easy. Very? Hmm. It's simple. The word of God said, to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Do we get that? Yeah, yeah. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. But the next part of the sentence, the next, the next part of the sentence says, what? Deceiving your own self. self. In other words, my little children and those listening, I want you to understand that if we do not allow the word of God to dwell in us, it means that we deceive ourselves. So if we go into church every Sabbath, and we're not transformed by the word, and the word does not transform us, it makes no sense. So we only hear us and not words. But the Bible goes on to explain that if we be here as only, we like a man who be holding our glass, or be holding our face in a glass, and we forget what man of man was. Now you know when you hold a glass in front of you, you tell you what is on your face and so. Mm. A little people here yeah, and that's what they are looking and some of the nice ladies and they would squeeze them out and we get this to be different and nice because they don't want to them what I do. So it tells you what kind of things is happening on your face. So it means therefore that if we are not doers of the word, we like come just like that man. But when you walk on the road, you forget what man of man was. Could you imagine that? So I want us by God's grace, based on the recommendation that is given. To let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. 
according to the recommendation, Paul put the word of life that we may rejoice at the second coming. And the other one tells us, be doers of the word and not your own. Brethren, you have heard it. Is there anyone that has been treated by the word of God? Those who have not accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. But you have the Bible perhaps at your home and we did not read. Really, we did not make use of it. We did not realize how important the word is. But we realize it today. And today could be a turning point in my life and your life. Is there anyone in the congregation that has been treated by the word that has been presented? Is it your desire to allow the word of God to rule in your heart? If it's your desire, could you just show by a little bit around? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we have seen the hands that have went up, allowing Jesus Christ to take charge of our lives, and allowing the word of God to be part of us as we live day by day, and that the word will in us richly, could we now stand to our feet? As you have now stand, you stand in recognition of the fact that the word has taken effect on your life. The word, as we have said here, it is true, it is very pure. Therefore, each one of us must love it so that it will be in us. I now will pray a prayer of commitment to everyone. Dear Father in heaven, thanks be to God for your word today. I thank you for giving me words to speak to your people straight from the word of God. And I pray that as your people have respond to the call, I pray that your word will continue to take effect of each one of our hearts. So that we allow the word to rule in us richly and to live by it. As you have said in your word that man would not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. I pray, dear Father, that we would so humble ourselves at your feet, allow your word to be effective in us, to transform us and to make us ready for your soon coming, so that when you shall come in the clouds of glory, we shall not be running to and fro, but because we have been fortified and your word has been the entrance in our hearts and take effect, I pray that God that we run into you and say, Lord, this is our God, we have waited for him and he will save us all. Prepare us for your soon return. And help those who have not accepted you as yet to do so, even while there is time. There are many of us here that have children, that have families, neighbors and friends that have not accepted you. I pray dear God that you will hasten their heart and help them to make a decision to follow you. Help us dear Father that when we pro proclaim your word, we will do so with, with sincerity of heart. That we will do so with clarity. And that your will will be done in us so that as we proclaim your truth, every hero will hear the words of Jesus for themselves. Take charge, I pray. Bless us together. Keep us as a church. Help us to be united in love, to be in unity. And by your grace, when you shall come, may we all rejoice at your coming, as your word has been effective in our hearts, so that we shall reign with you forever. Is our prayer in Jesus.